Okay. Well, thank you for the introduction. Usually, nobody knows anything about me, so it's good that you see some pictures and uh, get the intro done. So I'm going to I'm going to talk about Angular 2. And I decided to use this uh, the amazing Angular 2 because uh, we are really excited. We went into into Vita from Alpha, and uh, it seems that uh, release candidate is just around the corner. So I can uh, I can start feeling the excitement. More people using Angular 2, and uh, this was this was an introduction talk but I just kind of uh, pump it up a little bit. So if you get lost at any point, you just uh, ask me or just say, okay, Gerard, stop, stop there. I'm completely lost. So before going into the presentation, I, I'd like to show you um, or talk a, a little bit about me. So this is the avatar I'm using. This is uh, nothing like me. So this is a white tiger, and I quite like it because sometimes, you know, you feel down. It's like, oh no, I have to do this talk. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I want to, ha I have, I want to have a nap. I'm actually from Barcelona, so we take naps there. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, there's no time. So, well, you can see a little logo there on, on the top. This is from the um, uh, Google Developers Experts. Um, this is specific for the Angular uh, GDEs. And it's not used that much, but if you go to the Angular 2 site and go to the news, sometimes there's some blog post that uh, comes from an Angular GDE, you will see this logo there. We don't have t-shirts yet, but soon we will have everything. So a little bit more. So obviously I'm a JavaScript fan and I hope there are a lot of uh, JavaScript fans in the room. I'm also an Angular 2 lover, uh, oh, okay, fan. <laughs> and um, I'm also um, um, proud of being uh, running this Angular Labs group um, for more than a year now in London. So we are covering, we are doing code labs. So it's similar to a workshop, but it's just, you know, tiny workshop, just uh, maybe 10, 20 minutes exercises. These exercises are open, so anyone interested can just go there and do these exercises. We cover usually any Angular topic, but lately we have been doing Angular too. Um, we also like to explore other frameworks, so we also explore Redux. And I will encourage you to look into other technologies, not just you know focus in one, but look at other what other frameworks are doing is always interesting. Okay, so this actually happened to me, and this was a few days before this conference. And I received this message. It's like, oh my God, can you build me an app, please, Gerard? And I, it's like this picture is like Spider-Man is having trouble there. And I feel bad, and it's like, okay, I'll, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Don't, don't be worried. Uh, the thing is, we have these these friends. You know, when you are a Google developer expert, you have cool friends. So that's it. And I'm kind of thinking, okay, which framework I'm going to use? Maybe vanilla JavaScript, but I want to impress Spider-Man with a nice prototype and like really quick, you know, get him uh, on board. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm an Angular expert. Maybe I should use Angular. And Angular to reach Vita, so I was pretty sure it was going to work. So I was trying to sell these features to Spider-Man, and I was saying, okay, look, this is an option I want to use. And there are so many frameworks there, but Angular 2 looks like really nice. It's it's simple. It's fast works everywhere. And I was expecting a Spider-Man to get excited, but he was like, okay, <laughs> I don't mind, whatever. 
And I'm, I'm trying to sell the point, like, okay, we can use different languages. We can use vanilla JavaScript. We can use ECMAScript 6, which is really cool. We can also use TypeScript. And yeah, looking at the features, it's like, okay, I can use classes, modules, these cool arrow functions, you know, everyone, everyone needs arrow functions. And it's like, okay, then we have this other option, TypeScript, that I can use in my IDE. And it like it looks really cool. I can show to my colleagues, they are really impressed. Like the Java guys, they are like, wow, we have this for years. <laughs> 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 what is all this excitement? Well, we do front end, yeah. And so basically I was trying to explain, okay, so look, we have these options. I'm I'm thinking to use TypeScript because it gives me more IDE support. And Spider-Man was like, okay, whatever, you know, use whatever you want. And I'm like, okay, but you know, I'm really excited about this. And I'm showing some IDs. So we have Visual Code, WebStorm, Text Sublime, Atom, and in I'm, I'm, I'm not selling it. It's like, okay, look at this logo. <laughs> it's, it's sell as the super heroic framework, superhero framework. And it's like, yes, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's use this one. So I'm, I'm thinking, okay, what I'm, what I'm going to build? So what do you need? And he tells me this funny story. And he's, he's trying to collaborate with Batman. And that's a true story. And he's worried because, you know, I want to share confidential information with Batman. But the other day, Batman was working. And Robin is using the same laptop. And he was looking at this information. And he was worried, like, why? Why is he looking at my stuff? And we need to block this access. So we need to get some different users and, you know, get um, authorization uh, running. And he also had this problem. He's using um, another app and he goes offline sometimes. And, you know, he's jumping around, maybe it's hiding in, in some strange place. Sometimes he's visiting Batman in the cave and he, he loses connectivity. So he's really worried about that. And he's like, Gerard, can you fix these things? Like, yeah, sure. So, okay, let me let me go back to my studio. I have a really cool studio, you know, where I develop, and nothing like Batman, uh, you know, cave. But I go back there, and I'm thinking, okay, so I want to design this application, and in Angular too, what we use is components. So I had to think about this component tree. And this is how it looks. And you could take any Angular 2 application. It will look exactly like that. So we have on the top, we have a root component with some other child components uh, on the bottom. And then it goes, it can go a uh, few levels down. So nothing, nothing really special there. After some time, I come up with this um, kind of nice uh, screenshots and I could show what I wanted to what I wanted to build. So I had some top uh, sections. So we have home, users and about. And this is you know kind of plain, flat, uh, boring website. but I wanted to use something like really quick so I could show the features um, in a working prototype. So I thought, okay, we'll have a home page. Why not? You know, then we have the users. That's the main feature. We have Spider-Man and Batman. We don't have a user for Robin. We, we don't want Robin getting into the that uh, section. And then obviously we have the details. And if you look at the bottom, there's like confidential information. Obviously it's like really silly, but it's just the first iteration. You know. It will it will grow in features, and then we also have this um, this about um, section, and you can see this uh, icon on the on the corner. It means that it will be lazy load, 
And this, uh, this is something I wanted to do. Nobody asked me to do, but I wanted to do it anyway. And I thought that it could be, it could be cool because it's just um, loaded on demand and it's some feature that I like from Angular too. And sometimes developers just do that. You know, we add features nobody wants just because we, we love them. So I, I thought, okay, let's do this. It's, this is a prototype, so I'm quite, I'm quite brave. And yeah, we have this uh, child root, so when we navigate from one of the users, we just use the ID to get into the details. That's pretty standard. And this, is will, this will be the um, blueprint. So we have a top navigation. And <coughs> then we will load the different components uh, within this um, area. So we have the top navigation and then the main, um, the main component. So in this case, will be the home component. And then you can also see this nice um, control. It's just because I had no time to build the actual thing, the actual uh, authorization. Uh, service, I just build like a silly, uh, you know, flag just to say that the user is logged in or not. And then I, I also add a link to the today's best superhero that is always pointing to Spider-Man, you know, just to keep him happy. Okay, so everyone in the room with internet access can try this application. And as we go uh, along, you can, uh, you can check the features that we are looking to. So I, I created these um, few links because we are quite a lot of uh, people. It's good that you can use it. So when we get into more complex um, areas, you will be able to see it working, which is, uh, which is great. So anybody is able to, to use it? Okay, we have one, one, two, okay. I think we need more people. We are like 200, so at least we need 20. <laughs> okay. Just show me, show me if it works. I can see a little bit the numbers, and then we can move on. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. So this is what I, what I gave to Spider-Man, and he was really excited. And I was able to do that because I use Angular. So I could build this prototype like really quick. You will see that there's no uh, there's no much code there. Okay, so let's let's move to the next section. Um, maybe the you know the first feature that any uh, beginner in Angular 2 it's Bootstrap, and this is when Angular 2 um, gets started and obviously gets uh, to the root component and starts going, walking down the tree <coughs> and just um, rendering the different components and you know, um, fixing the, the bindings and the wiring. And while that is happening, Angular 2 allows us to just show something to the user so he gets some feedback. And I think you already saw that uh, bit in your mobile. So that's, that's cover. We have Angular application instantiation. We need the root component. And then at this point, we usually decide what are the global dependencies. And this, this is the case of uh, the router. We are going to use different routes, so we need the router. We are also going to load some data from um, HTTP using the HTTP. And then obviously we will build some small services to help us build the features. This is not uh, done on the application, on the prototype, but you can also use this um, for to pass global values and you know what not um, vendor dependencies. So this is how it looks. If we look 
we are in a single page application. And this will be like a development environment. When we are in production, we will just have one file. But as we are in developer mode, we can see all the dependencies. It's not bundled, so it's not optimal for performance. We're using uh, System.js in this setup. There are other options, but this allows, allows me to use TypeScript, which was one of the things I liked um, at the beginning. And the main reason is because you have uh, IVE support, and that just helps on development. So besides, this is quite standard on JavaScript. So we get, we get the application started uh, in that bottom line system import app that will kick in um, the Angular code and just uh, run the bootstrap. On the body, there's no much happening. We just have um, this element, my app, and then the loading. So that's uh, pretty easy. You can also notice that we have uh, new elements. We can define new elements in Angular. Um, that's also in Angular 1, so it's not a, it's not a new feature. So we can create our own um, elements, HTML elements. The bootstrap uh, really looks like this. Uh, how many people is familiar with MScript 6 uh, module system? OK. So this, this bit here, this syntax is just saying, OK, I want to use um, this function. Bootstrap is a function, so I'm, I'm going to import this function from this uh, file. We are not seeing the extensions. It's just uh, defined in a config file. So in this case, it's a TypeScript file. So it's Angular 2 platform browser dot uh, TypeScript TS. And it's the same for the, for the rest. These systems are used in other languages like Python. And you know, when you get familiar to this uh, syntax, it's quite easy. And also, uh, you get the, these imports from the tools. Um, so that's something that you know, don't have to remember. OK, so we have the bootstrap. We also have the root component. It's usually called app. <coughs> and then we have some uh, imports on HTTP and then some service. I just removed some of these imports because it's, they just look the same. And on the bootstrap, you can see the function is taking the root component, and then it's taking an array with all the global dependencies. So we have some coming from Angular, and then we have uh, some others coming from the app. OK. Everyone understands the last uh, line? We have a catch with the arrow function. This is not doing much, but just showing that you can use the error and maybe send it to some uh, backend tool just to trace these errors. OK. So looking at the um, root component, we are using an annotation. And this is um, uh, common in other languages, uh, like Java or .NET. So we have the add symbol. And we are passing some configuration options. The main one for the bootstrap is the selector. And if you remember, my app, that was the element that we use in the, my, uh, in the index HTML file. Then we have the template. I just removed that because it's, uh, it's boring here. And we are using the back ticks just not to load the file. So we are just using the uh, HTML just from this um, annotation. In TypeScript, we are using uh, MScript 6 classes. And you can also notice the export. That's uh, to be able to be uh, using the import from other components. And we can also see uh, the constructor. In this case, it's just empty. So just by doing that, uh, the code we have seen, we get this basic uh, loading. And I was thinking, this is, this is not enough. So I, I just you know, spin it a little bit. If you can add you know, uh, animated GIF to any of your you know, production code, it's, it's cool. And 
Yeah, I thought that this this gift is is nice because you know Spider-Man don't want to be caught. You know, it's like sliding slowly. He loved it. So neat. Yes. Okay. So I had to implement some services to get some of the features working. The first one I I wanted to show is the authorization bit. So we have this switch that we can just log in and log off. And when it's um, when you are not logged in, some parts of the UI are changing. And I'm going to show how you can uh, implement that. So the home is just changing a little bit. And it gives you some feedback. So it's the first one is you are logged in, and it's showing locked, yes. And when you just switch it off, it will just show locked, no. Obviously, you can use any, you know, you can expand on, th on that. Then on the users, um, on the users list, we just disable, so Robin cannot get into the confidential information and just gets the list, which is fine. So how are we going to do that? We're going to create a service I called login service. And in order to do that, we use this uh, injectable. And this is to bridge between uh, MScript 6 and Angular 2. So it adds some annotations that will make this um, class available to the dependency injection. And you can see that it's just a uh, you know, flat class. I'm using a public property, just authorized. And then I'm able to change um, that. Usually, you will have a call to a, you know, a backend, an endpoint, and you will get you know, the authorization from that. In this you know, prototype, it's just a silly, a silly service. But it just gets the work done. So it's holding the state for um, if the user is logging or not. And the way you, you use that, um, in the home page, as we saw, we are changing some bits. So we have to import it. And then we can use it. OK, we are um, using dependency injection on the constructor. So once we instantiate this uh, component, we will have the login service available. And this private is a TypeScript uh, shortcut. And this is uh, equivalent to just saying this dot login service equals to the instance of the service. So it's just a, short, a shortcut. So if we, if we see how we can use that, you can see that I'm using on the checked um, attribute. I'm just setting the check attribute to login service authorized. And that's the property, the public property that we saw on the service that I just use um, true. So it's the user is logged in by default. And here we can see some of the new uh, syntax, uh, template syntax from Angular 2. The square brackets are used to set values. And you could read this like, OK, I want to, uh, to set the checked attribute with the value coming from login service authorized. So it will be initialized by true. And that will make this input uh, is a checkbox, so it will just show uh, like active. We can also use uh, ngif, and this is kind of um, changing the DOM elements on the page. So we are using this uh, asterisk in Angular 2 to point that. And we can use the same uh, login service authorized. And this, when it's true, it will just render whatever is inside. So in this case, we are showing the link. And when we are uh, logged off, we are just hiding that from the user. So that's pretty easy. We can also see how we use the hash switch. So we can uh, reference the DOM element. And we are using that on the click event. And this is another uh, new syntax that we use. So we can use parentheses, and we can uh, access the DOM, um, the DOM element events. So this will be like a standard XML events. And this click is just the on-click event. This is also a cool feature uh, of Angular 2, because if HTML is changing at any point, we are not using a dire directive from the Angular 
two core. We are just accessing the, the DOM element. So in this, in this click event, we are just passing the checked value. So this is a checkbox. This is like the switch that you can see. And if it's uh, active, it will just send a true. And that's going to this method over here that will just call that method that will change you know, to true or false um, the state of the service. Well, even when you try to <laughs> do a simple example, it gets a little bit complex. But I, I guess that um, you can follow it. So that's um, some way to use um, a simple service. Uh, for the users, what we are going to, to do is hide some of these links. So we don't want uh, the user that is not authorized to navigate. So in the, in the users uh, component, we want to show the list of users. In this case, I'm using a predefined um, array. Usually, you would use an, an endpoint. But you, we, can, we can do that in a, in a following iteration. We can see that we are using an ID, the username, and then some uh, kind, if we want to extend it with some roles, we can use this other field. Obviously, we made Spider-Man administrator and user, and Batman will be, will be just a simple user. So how, how can we implement this uh, data service? So in order to implement the user service, we are going to use um, the HTTP module. And this is a separate bundle that we have to include on the index HTML page. We can also see some uh, the last two imports are coming from RxJS. This is also an external dependency. And one nice feature that we can use is we can choose the operators we are going to, to use in uh, our component. So only these um, members of these functions will be uh, taking, making used. So you are, you are just cherry picking these um, operators. We use this um, to inject the HTTP module. So we're using a dependency injection. We also use the injectable to be able to use this service in other components. And in this case, we are just calling HTTP get. <coughs> As we saw, we are using a JSON file, like a predefined um, data source. We could easily replace it with a, you know, a final endpoint. That would be quite easy. And then in Angular 2, they decided to use observables. <coughs> and that's why they are using RxJS. So the, the type returned by the HTTP get call, it will be an observable. And if you are familiar with um, RxJS, we can use uh, you know, operators like map. And uh, the last one is uh, to handle retries. So you can see that the code is pretty, it's pretty easy to follow. We are getting the response, and then we are just parsing the body to get a JSON object. And the last one will just get errors and just replay this observable every two seconds. So when the connectivity is down, it will just wait for these errors and replay. So that will make this service uh, quite reliable. We will see an example later. You can also try in your in your phones if you want. So how are we going to use, how are we going to consume this um, service? Obviously, we have to import it. And we will create this user list component to do so. Um, we use dependency injection to inject this service. And because we are using an observable, the way to consume this is using subscribe. Once we get the result from the call, this, um, this event will be uh, executed. So we will get, on the first argument, we get the user uh, array, so the users here. And we can just do the assignment 
to make it available to this component. We can see how we can deal with lists using ng4. Because we are changing the DOM, we are using this asterisk. <coughs> but then you can see it's uh, using MScript 6 notation is we are assigning each of the users to uh, a hash user. This is a local variable. And then we just go over this list and print out the information from the user. What the hashtag allow, allows us is <coughs> to have access to the user object so we can access the properties. <coughs> and then we're using this uh, curly braces notation just to render the content of this uh, property. How, uh, how many of you are using Angular or are familiar with Angular in general? Okay, so this is easy to follow. How, how I'm doing? I'm doing well. Too fast, too, too slow now. How many of you are trying the application while I'm going through the slides? A few of you, okay, good. You'll get a sticker later. Okay, so yeah, Spider-Man is completely relaxed. The project is advancing. Few features already. Very good. Now we're getting into the, maybe probably the most complex bit. It's the uh, set up for the for the routes, so we saw we saw we have uh, you know the top the top routes. We are using uh, the highest location strategy. This is the um, default in Angular one, but it's not in Angular two, so we have to do some changes to just be able to use these uh, URLs. If we want to change that to uh, just the regular pass uh, location strategy, we can do so, and it will look uh, a little bit nicer without the hashtag. The bootstrap to get the router working looks a little bit uh, like this. So we have these imports to get uh, the hash location working. We use the dependency injection provide function to just replace, change the, the setup. So just to remember the features we have these um, URLs, this is the top level, and then we have this child root uh, to access the details. So we want to set to get that set up uh, in our prototype. So we are going to import all of these different components. These components will be rendering the content for each of the routes, and we, we will just tell the router to just say, okay, when we are using the home route, we are going to render the home component. And we use the name just for uh, links. <coughs> and within code, we can use uh, what is called the domain specific language links. And these links are going to use the name. It's kind of a name uh, root instead of the, you know, the path. The only maybe the two different um, features that we are using is the second URL we are using a child root, and we mark that with three dots. So we are delegating uh, the roots to the users component, and then we we also have this fancy feature that I like to to add. This is the lazy loading, and the only thing that changes uh, using the loader instead of the component, and that will take care to load the component uh, live. Uh, on demand. Then we also are catching when we type any random route, we can catch that with the last um, route definition. So we just redirect into home. We don't want to get an error, so that's, uh, that's how we do it. Here we can see the setup that we decided to use, navigation on the top and then uh, the components afterwards. So this is how it will look on the code. And the way we um, define this in Angular 2 is using the router outlet. We have to, Im uh, to have uh, some imports in order to, to use this element. And this is the router directives. This will allow us to use this router outlet element. Well, 
Spider-Man is looking at us, so I need to speed up a little bit. We haven't done much. So let's see how we deal with the child roots. And we are using that for the users list and user details. And this is how it will look. If you remember, we have delegated the routing to the users component. So from the users component, we are just dealing with the hash, uh, with the slash and then the ID because we are having the users from the uh, parent. And then we are deciding to use, when we get users um, uh, slash, we are going to use user list component. And in the other case, we are going to delegate uh, the rendering to the user details. And these, these are the URLs, how they will look. So we are dealing just with the last uh, level. So uh, the slash is the last slash, and the hash slash users, that's the parent. Okay. So how we use child roots in uh, Angular 2? As we saw before, in the config, we use the three dots. And then the child can decide what roots wants to create. We, we have to define a default, so when we use the slash, it will use that component. And this is how the code looks. So we have the imports at the top with the different components, and then <coughs> we have to use a router outlet, so we have another level um, to render these this, uh, separate uh, user components. And then we have this, um, as we saw, we have these two cases, one for the list and the other for details. Okay, so navigation will be handled with uh, regular links. We can also use the link DSL and it will look slightly different. It's using an array so we can pass some arguments. So for example, when we go to the child root and we have to pass the ID, um, it's very handy to have this uh, array so we can uh, pass these objects. We also have some APIs to use in uh, within code. And we can, use, we can use either the path, like the route, or we can use these, uh, the names that we use on the definitions. So this is some examples. This is the top roots. This is how it looks on, uh, on the template. And if we want to pass some arguments, we can do it um, using the array notation. You can also notice the square brackets. That means that we are setting the value of this um, attribute. And how, how we access these uh, extra parameters is uh, by using root params. And we will just inject um, the params on the constructor and using get to get the, the properties. So it's quite, it's quite easy. OK, OK, I'm, I'm going. For the navigation features, we had some uh, navigation requests. So uh, a spy a Spider Man told me also that he was filling in all these long forms, and sometimes he he was losing the information, the work done because he was going offline, and that's really annoying. That was really annoying him. So we are going to implement this feature using a uh, one uh, root lifecycle that is can deactivate. So before leaving any root, we can uh, hook into this uh, lifecycle event. And we use like a pop-up just to say, okay, you want to leave this page, just not to lose the information. So that's really easy to implement using these uh, two features. We can also see how we can block access to roots. And that's uh, done using the can activate annotation. And we are using the initial login service if we <laughs> If we get that the user is not authorized, we just cancel it. So that's the resolve. Uh, it's, it needs a uh, promise. So yeah, that's uh, giving a headache to Spider-Man. It's a little bit difficult to follow. So this is the life cycle. I'll just show how it works. So when we are navigating from one component to another, 
we can see one component in one color, and then the, this, the target component in, uh, in yellow. So that's the source component, and the other is the target component. Can be a little bit confusing, but if you have this image, it's easier. So let's say we are navigating from the user list to the user details. The first hook, uh, lifecycle hook, will be router can deactivate. And we can cancel that, returning false, or a promise that can be true or false later on. Then on the target component, we can use uh, the annotation can activate to also cancel this navigation. And we have used that to block um, access. And then still the states uh, goes back to the source component and it's now saying, okay, I'm going to deactivate before moving into the next uh, component. So you can also use that moment to maybe do, do some cleanup. And then finally, the target component gets activated. So you can also cancel at the very last moment. Okay, this feature was not requested, so I'm going to do it really quick. So just to remember how to define lazy loading uh, routes, we use the loader property, and then that's pointing to a function that is going to load this file, and that's the that's containing the component. So that's going to happen only on demand, which is um, a cool feature, not available in Angular 1 by default. And then obviously we have the component definition. In this case, just the title. So that's perfect. Happy Spider-Man. We have the demo. And I added some more features on the demo that I, I just have no time to show. But just to mention a few of them, I have this uh, SVG uh, animation that you can see on your, on your mobiles. I also have some, uh, some other bits and pieces. But maybe the most interesting is the one that I was talking at the beginning. So we are getting here. OK, let's log in. Oh. OK, I'll use this other version. So I'm here, and I'm getting the data from the users every time I navigate. So let's just get offline for a moment. And I'll just show the, um, the console really quick. So now I should be offline. And if I try to use the application, obviously it's just not getting the, the data. And yeah, to show this, I'm using this animation. And you can see at the bottom, Every two seconds, we are getting an error. Just from, it's trying to get the uh, JSON file, but it's not uh, being able to do it. So we get that uh, error from the HTTP module. And as soon as I get back online, just because I'm using this retry when operator, it will just you know catch up and return the results, hopefully. Okay, still connect. Oh my God. Okay, as always, <laughs> demo time. Okay, never try this with a client. <laughs> okay, if you can uh, log off, please, just for me. Okay, maybe this one. No, free. Free Gutenberg. Park. Too many people. Oh, really? Wow. Oh, it's not there now. Oh, no, here. Okay, let's give it some try because it's good. Oh, my God. What's going on? Any hotspots available? No? Well, I promise you that as soon as I get <laughs> connectivity, it will show the, the list. OK, boom. Uh, oh, oh, here. Yes, I didn't do anything. <laughs> but let's do it. Let's do it like forget the last two minutes. Just 
Just try it again, you know. <laughs> okay. Okay, yeah. Please. Please, Angular Gods. Yes. Yes. It wasn't a trick. It wasn't a trick. <laughs> so it works. Yes. So I also want to introduce some quickly some conferences, cool conferences coming in the Angular world. This one is in May. Um, you don't have, obviously, if you can go, go. But if you can, you can also follow it uh, on social media. Uh, usually they publish live stream. Uh, slides, content is also really cool uh, content there. There's also the Angular Connect happening in London. Easier, easier to get there. And uh, yes, that's that's all. So thank you, thank you, Shane. <laughs>